go, guys. Survivor China is coming up. We're going through every season and chronologically and ranking the greatest players of all time one season at a time as we go through Survivor history. Where do the players from Survivor China rank compared to pl- the greatest players from the first 14 seasons? Those players ranked in 14 previous videos are down in the description in the order of their rankings. It's basically just the best players from those seasons. And we're building up gradually until we get to a top 50 greatest survival players of all time list uh, at the end of season 46. So, Survivor China, where do we go from here? I think one honorable, honorable mention I want to give is PG. I really went back and forth about whether to put PG into the list at all. She was very, very close. Maybe the closest anyone's come to getting in the list of the top contenders, but I just thought she may have rubbed people the wrong way a little bit and that may be she got really unlucky because I think very few seasons do you look at the two tribes and go one tribe stronger than the other and that actually does play out like Koror that was the case but then I mean sorry so other Palau that was the case but the Koror actually ended up winning the tribe who looked weaker (laughs) ended up dominating in this one it kind of looks like Fei Long was the strongest tribe to begin with and uh, I think they all got a little bit lucky being, you know, with having James and Aaron on their team, uh, it's just, yeah, it was a bit lopsided. Although as the season went on, we saw that the women of Zhanhu were stronger. Um, but yeah, ultimately it was still, I think, a bit weighed in Fei Long's favour. And that's where PG got a bit unlucky. I think she was always going to be down in numbers heading into the merge, just due to her tribe strength overall. Uh, and just getting unlucky too with like Ashley, who was a very strong woman, getting sick and just having to basically get voted out of the game and not really contributing much because of her illness. Uh, as far as the tribe swap, I'll call it that, uh, <laughs> they played it exactly right, even though <laughs> James was getting so frustrated, obviously. Um, they played it perfectly, where they basically had, you know, they threw the challenges to try and get rid of James and Aaron as soon as possible. That was perfect. Um, yeah, and then the scrambling after the merge was really good. She really tried. She won a few challenges, too. Again, granted, by the time... Uh, she competed in those challenges. It wasn't against the toughest competition necessarily by the time she won those challenges, but still. And yeah, played the game really hard. Really loved PG. Was very frustrated when she came back and was literally voted off because she couldn't stand in Abby Maria because I'd be the same way. Uh, I wish, I'd wish i love for PG to get a third chance. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'd love for PG to come back again without Abby Maria and get to play with a bunch of sane people who just had the right headspace for the game. Um... Yeah, but unfortunately I'm leaving PG off, but it was a very, very tough decision, only because she did seem to rub people the wrong way, and I think if she had got to the end, I don't know if she would have beaten that many people in the end game. Um, Yeah, that's anyway what we came down to there. Now, get to talk about Amanda and Todd, who are the two people who ran the whole game, essentially. Uh, Aaron got a bit unlucky. I think he got very unlucky... Aaron actually was a bit of a contender, a bit like Michelle from last season, how I, I decided to put in Michelle um, in Fiji. Kind of got totally screwed over by a twist, was in a really good position before that, and the people she was aligned with ended up going to the end. And, yeah, again, you can kind of say, you know, like Denise and Courtney kind of replaced him. I think Aaron may have been taken out before then, though. If I really had to, like, revamp China in that, say that twist never happened, there was never a tribe swap, and they just did the, did the merge. I think Aaron probably go, probably gets blindsided, you know, just after James and and uh, John Robert do so. Uh, Aaron was a content, was a contender as well. Amanda played a fantastic game the whole way through. She was obviously in the majority the whole way. It did seem though it was more Todd who did everything. Even the James blindside, where it seemed like it was Amanda's doing. Even Todd after the game said that was more kind of him. He was the impetus towards that. Uh, but the final tribal council was terrible. If you, it is compared to Todd, whose final tribal council was incredible. But yeah, this is a really interesting season because if there was no final tribal council speeches or questions at all, Amanda would have won. And basically, everyone who, you know, I don't know if it's, it's, it's exactly how it went, but basically, everyone who would have voted for Amanda, kind of everyone except for one, switched over to Todd <laughs> uh, during the final tribal council. And her performance was absolutely horrendous. Uh, she just wasn't willing to take any ownership of anything, and that's always, like, the big killer. I mean, people will, people will not learn from that mistake. People will do that in the future. 
you know, look at Coach in season 23. It's happened in Australian Survivor a few times as well. There's a handful of other examples where people going into the final trouble council will look like the winner, but they just won't take ownership of their game. And that's what costs them the win. And that's what elevates someone else to the win. Because they're actually willing to put their hand up and say, yeah, I did lie, backstab, cheat and steal. And I played the game hard. And yeah, Todd was willing to do that. Todd was absolutely incredible in the final trouble council. And that's why I'm not actually putting Amanda in my final contenders list either. It's just, she did get a bit easier by being on a stronger tribe. She did get roped into the alliance with Todd. Uh, and she kind of did had a pr- did have a pretty easy run. I think you put a lot of people into Amanda's spot in China. I think they do the same thing. They get to the end as well. Um, and her final challenge wins not that impressive. Like the competition wasn't really that great. You know, Todd and Courtney and Denise. I'm, yeah. She's not really beating the hardest competition there. So uh, yeah, I'd say that Amanda doesn't quite make it. Where does Todd rank? Because Todd, to me, did just about everything. He was brilliant through the whole game. His strategy of sort of having, you know, having a shield in front of him, but also having aligning with a weaker person so he wouldn't be picked off if their tribe lost. Um, yeah, it just was perfect. He, he basically gave, like, a, uh, a complete rundown of... He mapped out how you win Survivor, basically. <laughs> in a really good way. One thing he did get lucky with being on the strongest tribe... Um, his he didn't go to Tribal Council much before the merge, and that did not have much to do with him. He wasn't really that great in challenges at all. He didn't really do much in the challenges. Um, all due respect to Todd, he just didn't really, you know, he didn't really contribute that much to Fei Long's wins in, compared to other people, and didn't win any individual immunities. Uh, but as far as the individual game goes, he was in the majority, and he didn't really have to because he was always pulling the strings, always playing so well. And just the way he talked to people was fantastic as well. The guy was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm more than happy to put Todd uh, just below Tom Westman. He's going to be number two in the overall rankings. So if you haven't checked below, Tom from Palau is the number one greatest player of all time heading into season 15, Survivor China. Todd, number two. I do dock him a few points from... I don't know if the Survivor China cast were like the best game players ever. I've always thought that really enjoyable, like, likable cast, but, like, a lot of people there who just weren't very good at the game. I've always said that Chicken is one of the worst, like, possibly the worst player ever. Oh, if I had to say, he is the worst player ever. Um, there's a few other people in John who, who actually obviously got unlucky with her illness, but she really, you can almost count that down as a medivac. Um, so that's another person Todd doesn't have to beat. Dave was hopeless. I mean, we've gone through people on John who, who were terrible, but, <laughs> and some people just weren't really willing to play the game that harder aggressively and I don't think Eric quite had it in him to really play the game hard uh Jamie and PG certainly did but again they were down in numbers and always at a disadvantage um yeah uh, Todd's absolutely fantastic I mean if you do want uh we'll sort of like break it down a bit more later on he if you do know the reasons why Todd has not been brought back he kind of uh, had a lot of trouble with alcoholism after the show unfortunately um and he's better now but yeah, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that Todd hasn't been brought back. If not, he is a sh- he would be a shoe in to come back. He kind of is that super fan archetype that they're really fond of casting nowadays. Uh, and he was just also the phenomenal at the game, which not all the super fans aren't necessarily. Just ask Banu, <laughs> self-professed uh, super fan from season forty-six who just got voted off. So that's it for China. Uh, yeah, only one person got into the overall contenders in the end, as close as Amanda and PG got, and Aaron. Uh, yeah, Todd, absolutely fantastic. Second best player of all time after 15 seasons. Well-deserved. What a great winner. What a final trouble council performance. And uh, yeah, loved him. So catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye.